Hey, welcome to Girls Game Shelf. This is a paid preview for Exorcism at the House of Moncton Falls. This is a cooperative game in which you and the other players are working together to exorcise the spirits out of the house before they consume the whole manor with darkness. And this is how you play. First and foremost, you're going to lay out the room cards in this formation on the board with the foyer at the bottom and the attic card at the top. Notice that there are locked and unlocked room cards. Then you lay out all your pretty things. Here are the exorcism tokens, the darkness tokens, the monster and spirit pawns. And then here's the clock complete with eight dice and a, a, a counter to help you know how many haunt cards you'll be drawing. And then you have to lay out all of the cards that you'll be using throughout the game. Starting with your task cards. This is the primary way that you're going to earn exorcism tokens. You also have all of your tool cards. There are several different kinds, along with your plan cards and the shrouded room cards. These are the haunt cards, which is the, uh, the AI component of the game. And finally, you get a roll card and a player pawn. Now, the player pawn is what's going to be moving throughout the rooms during the game, and it has a starting location that um, is specified on your card. The card itself gives you information about your character, your powers, and, and where your starting position is. You start off by haunting the manor, and you do that by drawing one of the cards out of your haunt deck. As you can see, there's a die value on the card, but that is the location icon. All of the cards have a die icon up in the corner. So this location is four, and to haunt the manor, I'm going to put a darkness token on all of the rooms that have the number four on them. That's just one in this one, I think. Nope, two. You're going to do that six times, and then you're ready to begin the game. The first thing that a player does on their turn is reduce the value of the die by one pip. That's supposed to symbolize 10 minutes that the paranormal investigator has been investigating the manor. So each time someone takes a turn, you're gonna keep reducing the value on the dice. Once someone has taken six turns, you remove that dice from the game. If a star icon is revealed, then you get to place an exorcism token on all of the locked rooms. And if you get to unlock that room, then you can earn those exorcism tokens. Then the active player draws from the haunt deck, and this is the same as when we haunted the manor in the beginning, only it's just one card this time. So here I have a six, I get to put a one darkness icon on all of my locations that have a six on them. If a room gets four darkness tokens, it becomes a shrouded room, and you can't go there. There's also these different arrows on the haunt card, and those are to dictate where the spirits and monster pawns are going to move once they're out on the board. Two of the monster pawns are going to start off the board and you'll draw a haunt card to tell you when to play them, but the black spirit will begin in the attic. Once the active player has done all of their maintenance of reducing the timer and haunting the manor and moving the black spirit pawn around the board, then they get three actions that they can spend. One of the actions that I can do is to move my pawn two spaces, never diagonally though. I can also purify a room by removing one of the darkness tokens or by removing one of the shrouded room cards. Darkness tokens go back into the pile, but shrouded room cards get discarded out of the game. I can also do the action on the specific room that I'm in. For example, this one says that I can spend four key cards in order to unlock a different room card in the manor. And I can use an action to complete one of the task cards. Completing a task card is one of the main ways that you're going to collect exorcism tokens. But in order to complete that task, you need to collect different tools. And once you've completed that task, the black spirit pawn moves one step closer in your direction. That's significant because if the black spirit pawn ends up in your room, you become injured and you have to go out of the manor. So the player who is injured can come into the game as a lookout character. Meanwhile, the other characters can hightail it to the bathroom, which is the location where you can heal other wounded team members. Now you wanna make sure to heal other wounded team members even though you have your lookouts because if you get injured and there's no lookout to take your place, then you have lost the game. Other ways to lose the game, if you run out of shrouded room cards or if you run out of darkness tokens. While you are taking turns to get out of the house, the spirit is still trying to take you down with them. So you'll still be putting out darkness tokens and shrouded rooms and moving the spirit around the manor. But if you and all of your team members manage to expel the spirit and to exit the manor, then you win the game. And that is how you play Exorcism at the House of Moncton Falls.
Yes! <gasps> you want to be the dog! <laughs> yes. I want to be the dog. The so dog. Here he is, just like, where are you guys going? What's going on? What are we doing here? What are we, what are we doing today? And uh, growl and snarl. A uh, monster or spirit pawn may not move when haunt cards are drawn if they are adjacent to the animal companion. Ooh. So I can keep you guys safe from these guys if I like if you're saddle down next to you. My name is Jean Pierre. Oh, Jean Pierre. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Amanda Klein. Let's do it. We're. Oh, it's all right. Okay. Yeah, no one wants to start in the basement. That's like the worst place to start. Um, new evidence. Do I know, do I say this now? The journalist yeah. may spend an action to move any other player token up to three spaces. Whoa. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I'm just like imagining how this would work though. Like if we're in a real house and you're like up in, like up in the bedroom and, and you, what do you, you, you just like shout, Hey, get up here. <laughs> like, what if we're just on yeah. like radio? Like I picture oh, that we've all got go. like, um, like a walkie talkie clipped yeah, on okay. our belts. Okay. And then we have like those really cool, like little extra walkie talkie things that like clip mm -hmm. on your shirt mm -hmm. and you like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my god, can yeah. you do that whenever you have to move us? <laughs> Christina, <laughs> animal friend. Amanda, <laughs> Amanda Klein, <laughs> animal friend. Do you copy? <laughs> That's how you That's do yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm Roxanne Ward. Nice. And it's a great I, just, name. I just need a little, uh, just so for a little back backstory, um, first of all, I start in the garage. I design like big industrial style buildings, like workspaces. Mm -hmm. I try to make things look like uh, old garages and old warehouses, but you know we make sure that we tear down whatever old warehouse or garage was there first, and then build up a new and build. So you're not there. here to expel the spirit; you're here to get inspiration for your oh yeah architectural. Yeah. So you're just like our friend. You're like someone an acquaintance. Yeah, I don't believe know. it. I don't believe it. You guys are like it's haunted. Well, you're like it's haunted. And whose whose dog are you? Are you one of our dogs? Or are you a dog that lives on the property? <laughs> As an action, Roxanne can switch the location of two room cards <laughs> as long as there's no player spirit monster pawn on it. All other tokens move with the room to its new location. So here's the thing. I'm a total doubting naysayer about this paranormal stuff, but I also happen to have paranormal powers. All right, so I'm, I'm reducing this. Um, and then... I get my actions. All right, where am I? I'm gonna spend one to to move over here. I'm gonna spend another action to go here. And then I'm gonna spend a final action to take away one of these. Mm. Okay, I will take one of these. So that's one thing I've done. And then, all right, so that's two. And then now I get three key cards. One, two, three. Oh. What kind of keys did you find? Uh, hand axe. Oh. Ooh. On the back of all your tool cards, are kind of the type of tool. It could be fire, it could be an axe, you know? You have the ability in this game to read through the text and start to kind of piece together your own story about what's going on in the House of Moncton Falls. Or you could completely ignore that and just play the game. And I like that that option is there because our group certainly likes getting into the storytelling aspect of things. And whenever there's something that I can hang my hat on to tell a story, I really appreciate that. So there's all that potential there in the art on the back of the cards. Going, wow, this room is just full of keys. I'm gonna pick some up too. I've got fire. Oh, cool. Oh, burn got down the door. And an axe. And an axe. Okay. Remove a darkness token from all five, five dice picture locations. Gain a skull for each of these locations without a darkness token on it. Magnifying glass, two-way radio. This is how we're See? Nice! See on the radio! See? See? Amanda, these radios are great. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Copy. <laughs> <laughs> One of the main things that sets the pace and tone for the game is the haunt deck. So all of the cards coming out of there are really determining um, how we are interacting with these ghosts and demons inside the house. And they're also... Um, basically like spreading this uh, black haunting matter throughout the house. So, uh, uh, still can't uh, go anywhere. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Do you guys hear something in the uh, attic? I don't know. I don't... I'm gonna get you. To say hit me? <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, let's see okay. your ones. Ah, one there. And one. And one there. That's a problem oh. again. All right. And then now my 
my second turn, I'm going to go here. And I'm going to do this thing. Oh, yes. Spend key to unlock a room. And now I flip it. Yes. And this is very exciting. I know. Do it. <laughs> but also, like, stand back. <laughs> Anything can come out of here. Oh, a sunroof. What's in the sunroom? A sunroom. Sun room. Very dangerous sunroof. Remove a haunt token from this room and each room adjacent to it. Well, that's, that's cool. the power. That's nice. Yeah. I also liked the um the unlock room cards. I thought uh I thought that provided some like spice and variety to the game. I don't know ultimately if that was the best strategy to unlock them or not. I'm still trying to figure out that. Um but was it really fun to unlock a room and get to go and see what was behind it? Yes. Jean Pierre, leader of the pack, it's all up to you. <laughs> all right. Uh that and oh, oh they're gonna move. Oh no, not the black one though. Only the white one. Only the white one. And what is the white one? It's a it's a devourer. devourer. Don't yeah. worry, I'll just send you back to the He's got two mouths. Down here, so all right, so we can see. Oh he does. Yeah. He's gonna devour all of us with his two mouths. There I am. Ah, okay, I know what I'm doing. Your, we have this all planned out. <laughs> I'm going to yes. get my task card and put it in my hand. And then I'm going to spendy spendy. One, two, three, four. One, two. In order to earn six exorcism tokens. Yes. Yes. Put them on the board. Boom. I want like to have a, like, a rapid video moment where I'm just like. <laughs> you know? Exorcism yeah. tokens. I really enjoyed the the pieces. I like the exorcism tokens. They feel they feel nice and good with good light energy. And then I liked the darkness tokens because they're you know we decided they look like obsidian. I have pressures on. Feeling it, feeling it. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Nothing bad is gonna happen. Okay. You lied. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to yell at you. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend my things to unlock a room. Which one should I unlock? Oh okay. man, I can't. I feel like that's a personal question. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta decide where to throw your own axe. Okay, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I'm throwing an axe here. It's also like just like a really like easy shot for me through the office, there you go. all the way to the other don't end. Don't have of the to hall. go up any stairs. Yep. So don't this have thing. to avoid anything. Yay! This nice. goes to the bottom of that, right? Yeah. Okay. What is it? What do we do? Oh, it's the courtyard. <gasps> I love courtyards. Discard a tool card in your hand and gain one tool card of your choice oh. and a key card. Wow. Oh. So hey it's um, Note the, that's right next to where you can gain a task card, which is a very convenient, convenient place mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. Still don't believe in ghosts? No. I don't. Why would I? I haven't seen one. I haven't interacted with one. What's it's it gonna just... take? Yeah, so I'm going back <laughs> through the kitchen into the living room. Okay. To get the task card, one, which was two. this yep. one. Clear the it. attic. Yep, I like that do one. Do you have enough of those to I, make it happen? I do. I've <gasps> got I've got my I take my sword up the stairs. Yep. Light up my votive candles. Yep. Read from my ancient text. Yep. yep. But and you don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> I look at the ancient text with my magnifying glass and I go, yeah, there are no ghosts. Okay. <laughs> Roxanne was the level-headed one of the group. Um, she's the only one that really was grounded in the real world. This is a whole bunch of like, it's like, it's like Scooby-Doo almost. A whole bunch of like hipster kids are going in being like, we're gonna save the, we're gonna go find old Mr. Monkton's haunted house and rid it of the spirit of Mr. Monkton. Oh, what I'm gonna do, actually, is I'm going to switch the sunroom and the kitchen. Okay. And I go, is it too dark in here, Jean-Pierre? <laughs> and so I switch that, so that's one. Then I move in here, and then I make it a little less dark. Yes. Oh, that was a good move. I actually that was really like that. So good. Great. Don't kill me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I knew it was gonna happen. Oh, this is, oh you're my master. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh, so okay. So you're you wounded. go. You're wounded. Jump here. <laughs> you're wounded. You go over there. And you get to choose another person to come in as the one of your lookout lookout characters while you're healing. I had Amanda for the majority of the game, but then she was injured. 
AKA she never recovered, so she basically died. I like the part that even if you lose a character that you still get to play and that you now get new abilities. What I liked most out of this game was that it was difficult. Like I knew going in, I saw going in that there were a lot of ways to fail and only one way to win. This, oh gosh. Yeah. Gotta make it worse before it can get better. Four. Oh, we just shrouded ah! some rooms. Oh dear. You just killed you just, me. And you just killed her. You just. What? Oh, oh God, they were oh God. right the whole time. <laughs> It, it went from like this casual playthrough, like fun telling stories and like, you know, having having a delightful time expelling spirits and poking around a haunted mansion to, oh my God, there are these huge towering like pawns that are out to get us and they're chasing us around. And I liked that. I like that part about this game where it you do feel chased. You feel absolutely chased. And that's terrifying. Three, so okay, wait, threes. threes. Here's one. Uh oh, I'm shrouded. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, no! oh my god. What happens to me though? You're I'm injured. Scared. I'm injured now yes! that I'm in the shroud. And there's only one more lookout. Oh, oh I just my got god. in here. Oh my gosh. You have to heal people. Luckily, Dr. Wildwood is here. I got to play a new character, so I picked uh, Tanya Lise Schaffer, or whatever her name was, the psychic? I think she was, medium, the medium. So I picked her, I put her on a space, darkness fell, it was shrouded, so she died in that room, or was wounded, um, and she got kicked off the board, and then I got, and so I was like sad that I didn't get to play her, but then I got to pull in the doctor. I really thought we were gonna win. <laughs> I'm not, not dead yet! I have literally no doubt in my mind. You're not dead yet! No, that's three do things. Okay, Jean-Pierre, okay. <laughs> as soon as the counter went up though, and we had to draw like two and then three cards, oh my gosh, the the amount of darkness tokens on the board was just dizzying. You're out of the game, aren't you? I'm done. <gasps> oh no, oh, that makes no me lost. Does that mean if Doesn't one person mean... is out? Oh wait, no, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Because if, if there's, there's no, no one to take your place. <gasps> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We gotta talk to the designer really quick. <laughs> no, I think we lost. No, wait, wait, wait. 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 We're, We're freaking out. I gotta call the guy and ask him. I'm so sorry. Right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Blame it on the ball. <laughs> I just got my first cast card. We've never lost a game on this show. Oh my yeah. god. Uh, oh, I'm so glad you answered. Um, we're really distraught right now. <laughs> Christina is in the phone, like hysterical, almost crying. And I just was like, I, I feel like I heard that guy's voice be like, what's wrong? Like, what, are you okay? It was really fun having the designer on the phone. Um, it felt like a really like tense kind of moment, like in a film where uh, you're trying to defuse a bomb and then they have to call the expert and they don't know, like are you cutting the red wire or the blue wire? And uh, that was like our designer phone call. When do you put a lookout in your place? Is it right when you've been injured, even if it's not your turn and you're not the active player? Or do you get a lookout character come in at the top of your turn? Immediately. Oh, we lost. Thank you. I don't think I'm, I think I'm able to talk right now. I need to go grieve. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. <laughs> That's that. That's that. Well, That's that. <laughs> Good game, guys. <laughs> oh. Either. Like yeah. Kind of like specific. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know what the journalist one was. It was moving other people. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I just was, I don't know, I just never really saw, I mean, I guess I could have just been doing that. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. No, we didn't lose. Yes, we did. You're the doctor. Right, I was the, oh, I'm You're the doctor. The, we didn't lose. Wait. When a character is wounded, you may return their pawn to the foyer instead. And I guess I'm like. But the, we can't go to the first foyer. First aid. Yeah, that's the other question. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. Speakerphone. Very dramatic. 
Hey, sorry, me again. Um, so, so, um, hi. We just realized that Melissa is the doctor, so she can return an injured player to the. Yes. So she can return someone to the foyer, but but the foyer is currently shrouded. Can she still use her power? Yes, she can. Yeah! <laughs> okay. It was like it wasn't a loophole. It was just like a rule that we had missed, uh, which was that I had pulled out the doctor at like the very last second, and he could actually save someone. The book and and the medium got shrouded, and I pulled the doctor in immediately, yeah. and then. He came down, attacked David, and I said, David, put pressure on the wound. And he went, okay, and he moved into the foyer. Yeah, excellent. Gotcha. I mean, I don't even know if he was like that kind of wounded. I think he was more like this kind of wounded. Yeah, like spiritually wounded. Yeah. I was like, listen to these fat beats on my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the headphones Works are for. Every time. <laughs> Wait, I gotta relight the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not over. It's not over yet. I actually felt a lot of anxiety every single time uh, the pawns were moving towards us because, um, yeah, they could injure us and it really changed the game. Also, they're always like encroaching on you. So even if they're not, it kind of limits where you can go or where you feel safe going. Uh, I'm just really dreading this. Okay. Don't, don't do your meditation thing. Okay. Don't do I'm it. Trying just not do to it. Think about it. Okay, that one can't go Five. anywhere. This one can't go anywhere. This one goes in the attic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we and shroud this, or not oh, shroud, do that one. Okay. Okay, no more. Sh oh, and this one. Okay. okay. Feeling okay, feeling okay. Feeling good. That's just the first one. Mm. Twos. This one's. Oh, there's a shrouded okay. room. This one can't go anywhere. Damn it. I'm oh, sorry, no, we only have one shrouded <gasps> room left. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay, okay, I got one more. Okay. Please don't shroud a room. It won't, because we, uh, you don't have any three. Can't go anywhere. Go close. This one goes here. This one can't go anywhere. Where's the two? Oh, they're probably oh, all shrouded. They're all shrouded. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but look, guys, we get a little exorcism token Ooh, if we unlock a room key. One token. <laughs> but it Remember would be how exciting two. the first one was? It was so <laughs> exciting when we were young. One, two. That's your one move. Mm-hmm. Now I could move again and unshroud this. However, we only have one shroud token left. So if five gets pulled, well, if five gets pulled up again, we'll basically. Well, no, that's not true. Because if it gets pulled up again, we can shroud that one and we just need to maintain not shrouding anything else. So undoing one is actually useful. Okay. I feel like there were a million ways we could lose this game. <laughs> like I saw that happening for a long time. I actually just felt like we were just going through the motions as a group. I Probably Christina doesn't feel this way. She was much more positive. But I felt as a group, we were kind of all marching towards this inevitable doom towards the end. Um, and I felt kind of comfortable uh, letting it just wrap around me like a blanket of blackness. <laughs> oh no. Don't do it. <gasps> okay. Well, it was a good try. One. One yeah. by ones. They're shrouded. Shroud. Shrouded. Shroud. Oh, man. And it depends. Oh, it man. Now <laughs> <shroud. laughs> no, there's two more. Don't forget about those oh, ones. I can't forget about those. And these just go, just kidding. Here we go. No, these ones are standing triumphantly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, someone else want to blow out the candle now. <laughs> that was very like the craft, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I feel like we were maybe a little doomed after that grieving period. Like some of our bright and sunny disposition had been had been expelled too. I appreciated that like getting through this game was going to be work and that we would probably fail the game. And I think because of that, because I I went in being like, this game is going to beat us. Um, I wasn't super surprised or sad any of the times that we lost. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fun that there's a lot of different roles and that they each have a little, um, a little personality and that they each have something special that they can do that's different than the others. And I noticed that some of them have abilities that are just based on uh, replacing their own action 
for something else that they could do. Um, but some of them have abilities that just uh, they're able to use regardless anytime throughout the game or they have different restrictions. So I liked the variety of that, um, that, you know, all the different roles had something they could do, but they were so different from each other that I think it would keep up a freshness when you're getting new characters into the game or when you're playing the game multiple times. When you pulled those darkness cards, you then had to pull more haunt cards. I appreciated that a lot because again, it made it more complicated and in a cooperative game, the stakes have to keep raising or else I think it can get a little stale. So I liked that it ramped up and I didn't even really mind that it ramped up so fast. And the idea of trying to beat this game has me has me interested because because I want to beat it. I love that it's a cooperative game. And just generally I like cooperative games because then like everybody wins, you're a team, you're working together. Um, I like fighting the game. And so I just appreciate that that's the structure that we were given with this one. Um, and I really think it lived up to that with being difficult, um, but not too difficult, you know, uh, and it's enough to keep you energized and, and motivated and talking to one another and working together. So if you want to check out Exorcism at the House of Moncton Falls, it is on Kickstarter starting April 13th. The information is below. Check it out and thanks for watching. See you next time.